Well, welcome back to day eight of these Advent devotions from St. Thomas Church, Swansea. About 15 years ago, I had the privilege of spending two years in Thailand uh, working among a refugee community, um, the Karen tribe from uh, Burma, um, which was, uh, well, it, I don't think it's great, it's great now, but it was in terrible state as a country um, 15 years ago. Um, but as, as well as being a great privilege, it was it had many challenges. Um, we we were, we were, uh, had the great privilege of um, teaching English uh, to the students and uh, doing gospel ministry as well. Um, but it was it was a much more challenging way to live um, than uh, the comforts that we enjoyed um, here growing up. Um, so uh, just to, just to give you an idea, um, we had to drive one and a half hours every two weeks simply to go and check our emails. That was how remote we were. However, me and my team, we often had to remember that we were actually very privileged, um, not least because even more so than our predecessors who had been teaching and living in the same house just a couple of years before, because we had electricity. They didn't. See, where we were living, electricity had only come to the village two years before we actually arrived. That was now something that we took for granted there, but our predecessors hadn't had that luxury. And sometimes it's, we need to be reminded of the blessings as well as the challenges of the times in which we live, even when those are very, very hard times. There are still blessings that we need to remember. Um, for example, um, we enjoy the benefit um, of clean running water. But most humans throughout history never had that luxury. Same again with central heating. We kind of, most of us take that for granted. But most human beings throughout history couldn't take that for granted. I was just talking to someone earlier today who back, said um, back in the 70s, um, when all of the strikes were going on and the power, the power cuts, they only had central heating three days a week. And yet we take that for granted these days. And even when it comes to pandemics, this has been a very severe pandemic. And yet when you contrast it with the past... It was we, we, we're, we're so blessed. The, the medical provision, the, the, the relatively low death rate. So just to give you a couple of comparisons with the ancient world, um, in the year 180 AD, there was a terrible epidemic in the Roman world. And it's estimated that about 30 percent of the entire Roman Empire died in one year. And then also you'll have heard of the, the Black Death in the 14th century. Well, again, it's estimated that in the, in the Black Death, between 30% and 50% of the, of the whole of Europe died in that epidemic. So it's, it's important to remember that there are, there are blessings as well as serious hardships and tragedies in the times in which we live. And yet we need to remember our blessings not just at a human level, but also at a hope level. And this uh, theme comes up in today's verse, which comes from 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. And Peter writes this, concerning this salvation, the salvation that came in Jesus Christ, the prophets who spoke of the grace was, that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. Now, what Peter reminds us of there is that for thousands of years, um, the people and the prophets of Israel um, had these amazing prophecies um, but, uh, 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 about a great future, a great and glorious future. And yet they never saw the beginning of the fulfillment of that. And Peter reminds us, first of all, that we, we are part as people of hope, we are part of an ancient, ancient story. In fact, it was a story of hope as far back as the third chapter of the Bible. As far back as Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, there is a promise of a saviour. The promise of a saviour starts to unfold with a promise of a serpent crusher. The serpent has just messed up the world with his lies, messed up humanity. And yet very swiftly, even as God is, is declaring the judgment that came with disobedience, so also came the promise of a saviour. And then that promise of the, sa of, of the saviour developed and unfolded over thousands of years. Um, so in, in Genesis chapter 12, Abraham receives an amazing promise that the, the whole earth will be blessed through his descendants. 
Um, then you get on to 2 Samuel chapter 7 and King David receives the promise that one of his descendants will have not just a great earthly kingdom, but an eternal kingdom. And then as you read on through the prophets, you'll find like, um, uh, like, like, like diamonds in the dust, uh, promises of, uh, of, a, of a Messiah, of a coming saviour. Sometimes talked about as a servant, sometimes as a priest, sometimes as a king, sometimes as a deliverer. But there are all of these prophecies build up as you read through the Old Testament. And that is one of the most important things to pick up on, actually, as you read the Old Testament. And then you get to the final prophet, uh, Malachi, and one of his great promises in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. And this kind of, if you like, this is the cliffhanger at the end of the Old Testament. Malachi 3, verse 1. I will send my messenger, says the Lord, who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. Our forefathers and foremothers waited in hope for thousands of years. And we are part of that story of a, of a people of hope. And a people who waited in hope. But also Peter points out that we, that we enjoy blessings that, uh, that, that those before the time of Jesus never enjoyed. Because we live in the days of the Messiah. They could only strain to try and understand when the Messiah might be coming. But we can look back to that time as a glorious time that has come. What they never saw, we have seen. And actually, in the very opening of the New Testament, Matthew makes that point uh, in the way he begins his gospel. He doesn't begin with the birth of Jesus. He doesn't begin with the angel's visit to Mary. No, he begins with a line of generations tracing back from Jesus through David and back to Abraham, reminding us that the promises, the great promises that Israel had waited on for thousands of years have now come to pass, have now been fulfilled. The Messiah has Come, we live in the days, the days of blessing, knowing that the Messiah has come. And yes, we are people of hope. We are waiting in hope for, for good news in the future. But we are also people who look back to 10,000 tons of good news in the coming of Jesus. And so practically, let's learn from our forefathers and foremothers in the faith. Let's learn from them, those who waited for decades, for centuries, for thousands of years in hope. That's what uh, that, that verse we read the other day about when it that talked about the endurance taught by the scriptures. Well, these people who waited in hope, who held on to those prophecies, we can learn to endure like they endured. We can be inspired by, by, by those people who waited in hope in a way that it was actually harder for them than it is for us now. And of course, in times of suffering, the most powerful encouragements um, come from people who know what it is to suffer. And in times of waiting, the most powerful encouragements come from those who knew what it was to wait. So let us wait in hope, like all of those throughout the centuries, throughout the millennia, who have held on to this ancient hope. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious, glorious hope. We thank you that we are part of a story of hope that goes back thousands and thousands of years. And we thank you that we, that we were born at a time when we're not looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, but we look back to it and all of the good news and the fulfilment of prophecy that he brought. Lord, help us to be inspired by those who waited in hope before us. In Jesus' name. Amen.